Wow, switch is. Say again. So you're asking me to, mm -hmm. to answer a question with one sentence? Yes. Switch is the sustainable energy community. Academia, industry, and the general public. Working towards uh, a more sustainable future. Wanting to enable the change that our economy needs in a, in a practical way. Save money and help the environment. It's, just a, it's a lot of things. So I got involved actually before Switch was formally an entity. Um, there was lots of great conversation in our local economic development community, local being Kingston, uh, about trying to find a way to grow the sustainable energy uh, business community in, uh, in Kingston. At the first meeting, KEDCO organized with various stakeholders from the community, uh, Queens, St. Lawrence, the Fuel Cell Technology Center, various businesses and various other instructors and researchers in the field. It was only after two of those meetings that it became apparent that uh, an unincorporated, nebulous, moderately governed enterprise of people in the room would have to be shaped by choosing a brand and a mission and getting a corporate entity capable of carrying out activity. 2022 is the 20th anniversary of Switch as an organization. You know, it was incorporated in 2002 as a not-for-profit. Switch was started by Tom Harris, Chris Whitaker from St. Lawrence, and, and Peter Tobias. And it was essentially brought together, as I understood it, because I was new to them, uh, to bring together that like-minded business people that want to do something good for the environment, but also have a business opportunity out of it as well. Switch brought a lot of people of different backgrounds together because 20 years ago it was the only organization of its kind. So a lot of people gravitated to Switch as the community they could join to find out um, all the latest about sustainable energy. I was looking for ways to network when I first start my business uh, and so uh, Kedco had suggested that there's a new group called Switch. Um, so I remember vividly I went to the first meeting. Uh, there are about 12 people at the meeting. Three of them were all angel investors looking for the newest greatest thing um, and then everybody else was from academia. When I first started getting interested in electric cars I was a member of the Electric Vehicle Council of Ottawa and I had an electric car and I wanted to see if I could promote them where I lived in Kingston and I did a Google search and I found Switch and I asked them if they were interested in doing something with electric cars and they said can you do a talk? We need people to do talks. So uh, I've never done one before but I'll, I'll give it a shot. So that was my first introduction to Switch. One of the things we focused on was uh, lobbying as a community, uh, the Ontario government, then Minister of uh, Energy, John Baird, who later became a minister in the federal government, he was responsible for energy policy in Ontario and we had a series of meetings with him to convince him that the content of Ontario uh, electrical generation should include wind, should include solar, and so the early policy submissions that our group developed and made, ultimately some seven or eight years later became embedded in the manner in which the Wolf Island Wind Project was developed. I think the main activity of SWITCH uh, during the time that I was the executive director from 2007 to 2011 was to, was to grow the network. The network, the larger it becomes, the more valuable it is. Uh, and we had a couple of things that helped with that. Uh, one was just growing awareness of climate change. Uh, the second thing, very importantly, was the Provincial Green Energy Act, which uh, got people working on uh, renewable energy projects, 
there's also federal and provincial government uh, conservation programs, education programs. And so these kind of added together to allow us to grow the network, to get more businesses involved, to get more students involved, more researchers, uh, to get us involved in uh, trying to speak out on public policy related to climate change. So we had uh, funds to run switch but also to send people out into the field and show people how you can install solar energy at home or install uh, drain water heat recovery or to educate people about wind power, uh, geothermal power and also about how to uh, make homes more energy efficient and save money. Switch had a number of um public information sessions that they did. I think it was up at St. Lawrence College. So we did seminars on solar thermal. Uh, another uh, supplier did some photovoltaic. There was geothermal. So basically information sessions for the general consumer, which I thought were great and, and pretty uh, well received from the public. We did have a program called 1000 Solar Rooftops. Uh, and the idea was to get 1000 solar rooftops in the Southeastern Ontario area. And uh, I think that we, I, I haven't done a count, but I think that we're pretty close. The world changed for many of us, including Switch, I think, whenever the province brought in the feed-in tariff program. Uh, and I say that from two points of view. All of a sudden, there was uh, a very concrete opportunity to move forward. FIT stands for feed-in tariff. They gave end users money to produce green power. You put green power on your roof, on your barn, in, beside your home, you send that power into the grid and we will pay you a premium. When we started Green Profit, like people didn't know about the FIT contracts, they didn't know about all the sustainable things that you could do uh, that were green uh, to assist the environments. When Tyson took over as executive director, he started organizing two conferences a year. And we had um, a lot of businesses uh, join in. We had government sponsorships. Uh, we had industrial sponsorships as well. So that was a way of funding Switch. You had uh, the technology developers there. You had people from the, the community that were just genuinely interested, the hobbyists, if you will, that wanted to put on their own solar panels. So to bring all those people together, it was a great opportunity. I remember there were hundreds of people in the room. I thought they were very well organized uh, and really gave all of us a chance to sit around and discuss and come up with ideas on some of the most challenging issues in the sustainable energy world. You know, the, the, the series of conferences were, were very, very impactful for the community. Um, by the end, my impression was that they'd sort of run their course um, we could probably start them up again now and they would be very, very timely again um, with a, you know, a new group of people potentially and, and new issues to deal with because the you know, political and, and technological landscape has changed so much. The way that the organization started, literally, we're going to meet once a month, we're all going to sit around a table, and everybody gets a chance to talk, maybe we'll agree on some things. Maybe there's some things that three or four folks will agree to do together to help. So I started going to their open meetings, which are held once a month and continue to be held uh, once a month, where they had speakers, they had networking, uh, and it was really a, a community of people interested in sustainable energy that met every month but kept in touch and worked together on things. You will find like-minded people and there's open sessions for each you know, category, whether it's wind power, solar power, thermal energy, whatever it might be. Uh, there's exchange of ideas. 
exchange of news, things that have changed in the industry. It's a great way to stay up with what's going on in your industry in a very unique format. Each of these open meetings have, has an important portion where members exchange what's new in their field and you can hear interesting stuff. So altogether, I saw Switch as an uh, incubator of things that happen then elsewhere. What if we just stepped outside? Is that possible? Sure, yeah. yeah. So that's a 460 watt solar panel. Uh, when I first started 20 years ago, we would get panels, they'd be about a quarter of the size, uh, but they'd be about 80 watts. So a much smaller uh, energy density. Uh, over the years, what's happened is they've been able to improve the energy density of the cell. The technology itself hasn't changed much, but they've been able to get more energy out of um, each square inch of panel that we have. If you look up there, those are the two um, uh, domestic hot water solar panels. So that's where the um, uh, heat transfer fluid is, is being heated by the sun. And you can actually hear it in the house when, uh, either when the sun gets hot or when someone uses the water, uh, then you hear uh, it, the little pump that yeah. moves the well, glycol through those loops like start to run and I'll show you the chase inside yeah. too. And I think I've seen it so that's the thing. solar that's solar hot water. Um, hot know, water. I was yeah. It. yeah. yeah. I also draw to your attention and this is a solar uh, air heater uh, and it actually works really well it's made of um, pop bottles as far as our pop cans uh, and it, it just uh, the, the oh, really? sun comes through that plexiglass cover it heats up air uh, in a long loop oh, yeah. through those pop bottles. So that's the PV uh, and so we got the kind that is the cheaper kind. It just has a hinge at the top of the pole and the you can change the angle of the PV uh, panel which you're not really seeing from the best angle here but it's like every other PV panel it's kind of blue uh, and so the, the sun is hitting it generating electricity. The electricity is going down. Uh, we have a ditch like in a kind of a the tunnel that the uh, power goes through to the, the house and I'll show you the meter in a minute um, and this right now we've adjusted it for summer um, twice a year we change the angle so for winter it's more uh, vertical mm -hmm. and uh, Brian is the hero who sets up the ladder leaning against the uh, pole I go up the ladder and Brian uh, with some effort um, who changes the angle um, on the PV uh, for the seasonally so the heat pump it's a Mitsubishi cold climate and it's rated for up to negative 15, but it comes with a uh, 15 kilowatt electric furnace. Um, and it's heat and air conditioning. There's no external exchange of air. Uh, there's a MERV 11 filter, which filters out. It's like one of the strongest filters you can get. And the reality is that uh, it's improved the indoor air quality significantly. The other thing you'll see downstairs, which is really cool, is we have a uh, and Rosie was talking about this, a heat pump hot water heater. Now it's, it's a ream and you can buy it at Home Depot if you want it, but it's supposed to use 50 to 75% less electricity. And what's cool about it is that it has an energy saver mode. So because there's a computer in there, like everything today, it figures out if it's cheaper to pull the air in from the basement, if the basement's nice and warm or whether it should grab uh, electricity from from the grid and it also has a, um, a vacation mode. So I got here at 35% uh, and since we've been talking I'm at about 63%. So this is a medium speed charger. It's uh, eighteen dollars uh, per hour, so that would give me uh, three hundred and fifty kilometers of range for eighteen dollars. Which, you know, try doing that in a gas car. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I wrote down that we're still around after 20 years. <laughs> How do you like that answer? I think the biggest accomplishment of Switch is just to um, build and nurture this sustainable energy community so that when people wanted to do things, they could go to the network and say, where can I get some information on this or some advice on that or um, get a, part, a business partner or get some expertise. When you, you're seeing people a couple times a month and you're chatting with them and there's a bond that happens and a trust and that's what Switch created to allow us as a, as a company to, to expand and grow. We have always and still do been able to attract the most knowledgeable and technically skilled people. They have truly emerged as a, uh, a focal point or a networking opportunity from, for people who are, have this, this interest. It sounds small, but I think it's uh, just the monthly meetings, I think, is the greatest accomplishment that they've done. Just having, uh, having some sort of avenue for people to get together as a community, do some networking afterwards, uh, update each other on what's happening out there in the industry. People know about Kingston, and it's because we have held um, reputable conferences here over the years. We have had speakers come in. We have projects that you can see built and you can tour them. Wolf Island was one of the early ones. Amherst Island came online late in the FIT program after every obstacle you can imagine, it's built today. Certainly the Wolf Island wind farm, some of the other wind farm developments, community power developments and, and solar farm developments, these are really large scale industrial developments. This little town in this region has been able to capture so much investment and the way that Switch was able to bring together the contractors or assist the developers with, uh, you know, getting their concerns heard by the, the municipality. The trades were around the table, the educators were around the table, the folks that managed the big institutions in Kingston that were the large employers were around the table, the city-owned utility was around the table. We were able to design those programs in a way that worked for everybody. Kingston is by far the leader in number of chargers per, per person. Paul McClatchy is a member of Switch and he's the lead in the, for the city for the uh, electric charger rollouts. So that would probably be the biggest thing that I could think of. Switch has a hand in the FIT and MicroFIT program. Switch has a hand in my niece and nephew thinking solar panels are normal. That's pretty cool. So we were part and Switch is part of a group of people who not only believed but knew that things are possible. And through time, we're part of the people who persuaded the rest. Mm -hmm. I think where Switch could have a role is continuing to connect those technologies that are being developed at Queens, at Royal Military College, at St. Lawrence College, with businesses that are also startups and trying to do something new together. One thing that Switch could benefit from as it continues to grow is, is more business membership as well from some of the mid-sized and larger businesses in town. I would like to see more collaboration and events that, that were more collaborative because there are so many organizations now uh, that, that we could in fact partner with. Um, certainly one of my hopes uh, is that we will get to the point where we can have a full-time or part-time executive director again and then we can reach out and do those bigger things. My, my message would be try to think about what's going to be important 20 years from now. Try to do the work now not knowing what the future will be but that will help you and your colleagues shape the future. I think you should join Switch to become part of a, a community and a network of people who are not just interested in climate change, but interested in sort of professional, technical, uh, public policy aspects of climate change. It's a community that is very interested in figuring out what's the next thing we can 
do. There are often presentations by people who are bringing out new technologies, and there's, there's new technical developments all the time, but where you could go to find out about hydrogen or uh, you know, a, a bunch of different uh, approaches to addressing our energy challenges and have them all available to you through one organization, that's, that's pretty cool. Being a member of SWITCH means that you've got access to industry experts as well as um, very interesting topics on a monthly basis uh, that will broaden your understanding of what's available to you. I find it a really interesting group to be with because there there's, is a lot of diversity. There's age diversity, there's gender diversity, uh, there's really a diversity in terms of what brought people to the meeting. This is the meeting place. This is the place where people bump into each other, exchange ideas. We have been that conduit. We have been that conduit for students to come to monthly meetings, to meet business owners and meet professionals and see what a career in this could look like. And there's a place for everyone. I wouldn't have a career in the sustainable energy industry if it weren't for the connections and mentorship and support of all the folks that I met at Switch. 